Well, Mando talk is back, and also the Mandalorian is back, and man, was that epic. Okay, that was probably as good as a season opener I, that I could ask for, honestly. Absolutely. I mean, it was great. We've got Nolan Ferris back across from me that we're going to discuss up, this with. What's up? We got Jacob Keller finally back. He's been on a high yes, He's been avoiding us, I guess. But, man, he conveniently shows up whenever Mandalorian comes Mandalorian back. I mean, comes back. I can't I miss mean, it. Can't blame him, honestly. Hopefully all of can't our listeners showed back up tonight. True. <laughs> and then we also have Brandon Anderson. All smiles after that episode. That was a good one. Listen. We're, we're going to dig into it a lot here later, uh, but yeah, I, I can't stop smiling. We got a lot of good things going on. We got First of so all, many things we were looking forward to. We got new hats, obviously. We were going to talk <laughs> about it. I mean, we're all wearing them. I mean, Din jarin has got one. Darth's got one. We're going to have some, one of our listeners win one tonight, so a lot of cool things going on. Those of you watching on YouTube, you can see the bobblehead for those that entered the giveaway that you could possibly win. You can see the hat that you could possibly win. And then we've also got shirts getting made for you. I'm gonna so one of us is gonna message you on social media, ask for your shirt size because we want it to be custom fit right. to you. So we're gonna do that. A lot of things going on. Now, let's go ahead and do this giveaway. Let's get it out of the way. Let's do it. Let's get it done. So what we've done here is I've got inside, so yeah, thank you. Thank you for lifting that cap for him, B.A. Gotcha, gotcha. Inside this Darth Vader Halloween, so happy Halloween to everyone out there. Yes, happy We've Halloween. We've got all of the people that um, that entered the giveaway. Uh, we, had, we had it on Facebook. We also had it on Twitter. I'm going to shake this thing up. Let's go ahead and get this knocked out, and I'm going to ask one of you guys which one wants to pull it out. Right, I'll pull no, it out. No, no, go ahead. Ahead. Do it. You guys ready? Do not blame me if you didn't get picked. Because <laughs> I'm right. picking the good one. Drum All right. roll, if please. You wanna, do you want to read it or do you want to pass it to me to read it? If you can grab it. I'll read it. Oh, All I'm right. mixing them okay. up. Here's where oh, he but, I'm, I'm frothing. Here's where he names. butchers the Twitter <laughs> handle or uh, no, Facebook yeah, name. Yeah, he's probably going to mess it up. He's, All eyes on you. It's probably going to be like Star Wars related and he can't even read it. Uh, so, yeah, so it was post-it notes, so I had to stick them down. Yep, yep. Here we go. All right. The winner of the giveaway is at Rebel Scum Texan. Rebel Scum Texan. <laughs> Rebel wow. Dude. Scum Texan. Rebel Scum Texan. You man. have gotten the video. This d- call chat with us. Rebel Scum Texan has been like replying and talking to us on Twitter. So you know what? Shout out to you, Rebel Scum Texan. <laughs> Shout out you're, to you. You're well deserving. But I will say this: everyone that entered that giveaway was well deserving. We really appreciate it. Uh, what we asked you to do was either retweet, like, share, you know, the basic giveaway stuff. Mm-hmm. But we added something kind of different with it. So I real quick want to read our winner, Rebel Scum Texans entry. So we asked for you to share your favorite Star Wars memory, and here's Rebel Scum Texans. Favorite memory is seeing the Phantom Menace on opening night in 1999 with my dad. Oh, I'll never forget. Right on. I'll That's never awesome. forget how excited <laughs> I was and how in love with Star Wars. Star Wars it made me. That's so awesome. he's a prequels yeah. guy. Yeah. Me yeah. too. I've been there. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm there. That's an awesome memory. That's awesome. That's really cool. Okay, and he also said cuz again we continue to talk about this. You're awesome, dude. Rebel Scum Texan. He said that my four-year-old brain couldn't handle it. I was doing flips off the couch, bed, and walls <laughs> for days after that. So, pretty young. So, he's probably right he's in our there age, yeah. with our demographic here a little yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. Shout out to you, man. Congratulations. We will be hitting you up. and uh, We're going to be in your DMs, so keep that. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to slide right in them. Listen, so. <laughs> rep the hat like we're repping the hat. Yeah, oh, yeah. For sure. No, this thing, I mean, it's a <laughs> nice quality hat. Um, it's It fits well. It's going to be awesome. It's comfy. And we can't wait. My favorite good. part of this is we can't wait to get you guys on the show. Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. It's going to be cool. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot about it. We, we even have that to it yeah. as well. We'll have yeah. to have an episode talking about the, the prequels. Yeah. Dude, that would be fun. We're going to do a – yeah. so our plan is we're going to do a Mando mini talk. I'm sure you guys have seen them, but we're going to do a Mando mini talk with you on it where you're um, – can we, can we do that over Zoom and like – We'll work the details yeah, out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure yeah, it out. So you're going to be part of the panel. So we'll talk about, well, you'll have a couple questions to answer like all of our new guests do. True. And uh, and then we'll we'll talk about something. Absolutely. Maybe the Mandalorian, maybe the prequels. Yeah, now let's just go ahead and not waste any more time and let's get into this Mandalorian. Yeah, I don't think I can wait anymore. Like, <laughs> I mean, first of all, 
what? Okay, let's talk about the title just real quick. And I, I don't even think we saw the title before we watched it. And I don't even remember it showing it in the title I th- card. I think it just jumped in. And didn't it do that did in it, season one? It also? did on the first episode. Yeah. Did it show the title? Mm-mm. I don't remember yeah. that. It, it did, did show it? Yeah. Okay, so it, see, I was just too caught up in the moment where I, I wasn't even realizing that the title was flashed up there. The Marshal. And now that we're back, like, looking back on it, it's obvious who that's referencing. So full-on spoilers ahead. If you have not watched Season 2, Chapter 9, The Marshal yet... Log off now, go watch it, and then log back on exactly. and, and Thank listen you. to what we're pitching Thank to you. say. So it's written and directed by the man himself, John Favreau. B.A., just real quickly, I told you that information, and what was your immediate reaction? And we, we were talking about it when we were watching it uh, together. It's got a lot of similarities to Marvel movies. You can start to pick them out, and, and yeah. what better from the genius of those Marvel movies himself than right. John Favreau? I mean, he kicked off Iron Man. He kicked off the MCU with how great that ended up being, and you can definitely see some vibes like that. Yeah, and well, you know, my first thing, um, well, the first thing that comes to mind when you can start comparing the two, um, the dragon looks like the dragon. The uh, the creatures that come out of the black hole in mm-hmm. um, what uh, is Avengers? That? Avengers. I think it's just Avengers, one? right? The first one. Is it just the Avengers? It might be. I think it is just the Avengers, maybe. Okay. Uh, but you know when they come out of the sky and like the city. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah that's what that's, that's what that thing looks like. Similar, very it, similar, very similar. I can so see the resemblance. That's uh, that's what I got. So let's go ahead and and talk about this opening too. Like fresh, cold opening. <laughs> yeah, it just goes yeah. right to it, and it's really like the first shot that we see in the trailer that we got a couple months back. Yes. Uh, Mando goes to visit. Gore Koresh, the green Cyclops looking dude. We don't really get information as to what planet this is, no. but some quick little like Easter eggs. I'm pretty sure we see Ralph McQuarrie's old artwork of what C-3PO was originally supposed to look like on the wall in or the building in the graffiti. At the graffiti. Yeah. Did you guys catch? I know. Yeah. So you two clearly caught that. Nolan, did you catch that? I didn't. Okay. I saw a lot of like the stormtrooper graphics okay. and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. I thought that was cool. Being in the time period that this is set in and the state of the um, universe, galaxy, I guess. Galaxy, yeah. Galaxy. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. It yeah. kind of gives you an insight on where everybody is at. Right. In, it, or they... The mood in this area that he's in. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we go into that Gamorrean fighting ring. And Can I talk about one thing before we get in sure, there? Sure, sure. The little monsters on the outskirts, it's like a very oh, Halloween-y dude. thing, yeah. too, Halloween. to start it. <laughs> yeah. It's a halloween If Happy that's a halloween, word. Man. If that's a word, yeah. But, yeah, I thought that was cool, and we see them later, but we'll yes. get there. Yes, yes. Yeah, so we get in that fighting ring, and this is probably the scene that we had seen the most of before Mm -hmm. and i'm not surprised by that i figured the scene that they've shown the most of would be in the first episode they go ahead and get that out of the way uh but it was interesting i I didn't realize that he was going to visit gore koresh to try to find other mandalorians i didn't know that that was the connection between why he was there Mm -hmm. i really wish i knew where this was though just so we could get more clarification on what this Gore Koresh guy's got going on, but obviously he doesn't have much going on <laughs> yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Gore Koresh is probably dead. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yes, I would say so. I think that was his um, his termination yeah. to the uh, Mandalorian. Now, he tells him to go to Tatooine. What was y'all's thoughts when you heard Tatooine? Because immediately I'm like, Boba we're Fett. about to get some answers. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, first off, I think we predicted this. Uh, that he would be going to Tatooine early. Um, so, score one for man, uh, yeah, Mando put, Talk. Put the first w- win in the win column yeah. for Mando Talk. We're not going to go over two, the stuff we missed. Season two, we're 1-0. and oh. That's all that matters. Oh, we're more than that, but okay. we'll, we'll, we'll get, get to that scorecard. <laughs> we'll keep a, a, a tally. <laughs> um, yeah. But my first reaction when I knew we were going back to Tatooine was, um, well, I think we had talked about it during the show. You were like, oh, Boba Fett. Boba Fett, and I was like, nah, not yeah. yet. I didn't think I I did not think we were going to see Boba Fett Agreed. at all. Mm-hmm. I well, thought, I thought we were going to see him. But. Well, yes, I thought we'd see him, but not this soon. Right? Like I thought he was going to be like way down the road. Yeah, like mid season is what mid-season, I thought. Mid season, yeah. Um, 
But that was crazy. We'll yeah. get to it. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so my first reaction was excitement, but I didn't really know a whole lot of what right. was going on. Yeah. Now, real quickly, before we leave that opening scene, how would you rank it compared to season one? Like season one's opener, where he goes into that cantina and there's kind of like that showdown, and where that's our first intro of where he like closes the door. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. There's just as much action, I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. I would agree. And the stakes are higher. Right. Yeah. No, and it was really, it's a really good opener, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it compared to season one. And I would actually, mm -hmm. I personally, and it might just be the hype right now, I would rank it above season one's opener. Yes, just, I would too. Uh, very much so. I mean, because we kind of know all the characters, so we don't have to go over that. Yeah. Right. Or the character, the two main characters. No, no, I got you. We we have a... There's stakes already. Right. Like, there's stakes We know what, what is mm -hmm. going to, is what the mission is. Right. Um, And it just reiterates that. First thing, first couple of lines, it reiterates that. I got to get him back to his con, and I need a Mandalorian. Um, right. But... Now, way and, better than season one. Two and zero oh here. He goes to Tatooine, and we see Pelimoto. Me and Jacob, when we <laughs> did the chapter five yeah. rewatch, we talked about how when we go to Tatooine, we were pretty sure that we were going to see her again. I love that connection. I love that we're building on previous character yeah. relationships, and we're continuing to build that. And I'm, I'm, I guess we're pretty confident that we're going to see her again. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and we get a lot of comedy right there because to kind of lighten the mood, you know, with the droids, and he's like, ah, it probably needs to go uh, once over, so yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead, you know. Which, again, that shows a little, a little bit of a growth. character development there because, again, early season one, there's no way he's saying that. So yeah. I think that is, nah. is uh, stemming from the Ugnaught yeah, Quill. Yeah, IG-11. Well, yeah. Quill. Right. Yeah. Because Quill is the one that said it is not the droid. It is the droid's programmer. True. And it, it's just, what did he say? How oh, did he put it? Oh, okay, it's nice. It's an imprint of, the droid is imprinted by its creator. So he trusts more so the fact that these droids are controlled by, or not controlled, but. Are, programmed yes. Programmed by. Bossed programmed. around, programmed by Pelimoto. Right. Mm -hmm. I got you. I so like he that. trusts her, so therefore he trusts her droids. Yeah. Sort now, of thing. Now, she points him to the destination. The destination is Moss Pelgo. A place that I'd never personally heard of it before. It wasn't even on the map that she right. showed him. She uh, just knew about it. Locals have heard about it. They just maybe haven't seen it before. Uh, but he goes there. We see a really cool moment where he's talking with some Tusken Raiders, which is really interesting to me. Uh, yeah. A lot of cool things going on yeah. there as far yeah. as just them interacting with each other. But we finally get to the moment where he gets to Moss Pelgo, and he meets... The one and only Cobb Vanth. Do we com claim that as 3-0? I'd claim it. Mm. Nolan, do we claim that as 3-0? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's at worst 2-0-1. and one. We'll count as a tie. True. At worst. I mean, no. <laughs> I, I've called that because I called it during the show. Well, that doesn't I was count. Like, I was like, oh, you no. You could have no, saw Cobb spoilers Vanth. online. No, I didn't. I, I've been off social media <laughs> all day long. Because I know how you people are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyways, I we were sitting there talking about it, yeah. and you were like, oh, yeah. Because he said something about Mandalorian armor being on Tatooine. Yeah. Or a Mandalorian, and he was, and you were like, oh, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. And I was like, nah. Too early. It's going to be Cobb Vant okay. in Boba Fett's armor. Yeah, I so, would agree. Boo like, as soon as, <laughs> as, soon as, they, as Pelimoto directed him to... Moss Pelgo. I keep wanting to say There's Moss a bunch Isley. Of moss, yeah. I know. Um, it's Moss Isley, Moss I Pelgo. I knew it would be, or I had a feeling it would be Cobb Vanth. I mean, it was just too soon. What to sold reveal. it for me? What sold it for me is when, because uh, you know, we know kind of what um, Cobb Vanth is the sheriff over that sort of town, right? But when she said, or uh, yeah, when she said it's an abandoned town, I was like, yeah, this is this is definitely. True. The town where Cobb Vanth is going right. to reign. Boy, do we get some strong Western vibes from that town. Oh, man. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, let's talk Spurs about that. Sounding. The shootout potential. Fingers man. twitching by the guns. Oh, the, man. That potential of the shootout there, I was really like on the edge of my seat mm -hmm. for that part. Um, yep. 
I am kind of bummed that we didn't see a little bit of it though. Like it's just like a Ooh. shot where it bounced off the best car and they just kind of looked at each other like, "All right, who's next? Bing, All right, bing. your yeah. turn. Let's go." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just keep going back and forward, but they get interrupted by this crate dragon. Yes. And again, you guys called it when we were watching it. As soon as I hear that word dragon, what do I think of? Game of Thrones. <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> if this show gets close to the Game of Thrones as far as like epicness, we're right where well, we Well, I to haven't be. <laughs> seen Game of Thrones. I've seen a few episodes, but I do think it is very epic. Like Game I'm of Thrones not... or the Mandalorian? The Mandalorian. Okay, good answer. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm not <laughs> saying that Game of Thrones isn't because I haven't watched it, but right. as far as me being excited about a show, this is I am very excited about this one, especially after the season opener that we had tonight. Yeah. yeah. A very, very great start. It was a great opener. Now, I forgot to mention something. What did y'all think of the first initial view of Cobb Vanth when he was standing in the doorway? I, I thought, thought he kind of looked tall and lanky and goofy looking. I, I think that was on purpose, <laughs> though, because they're yeah. showing that, like, this isn't Boba Fett. Like, this is right. somebody that's trying to just fit into this Mandalorian yeah. armor. It was like almost like a, a guy showing up to a Star Wars celebration dressing up as yeah. Boba Fett. So what it looked like to me... What it looked like to me, it looked like the armor was too small. It looked like a grown up <laughs> dressed up as Boba Fett for Halloween. Yes. <laughs> That's what it looked like. Yeah. And he had like a red sweatshirt underneath. Yeah. That's what it looked like to me. Now, when he took the helmet off, I mean, perfect Timothy Oliver. Perfect hair. Perfect like, hair. Always. Yeah. Fantastic facial I mean, it just, hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he had the setting, like, I mean, that just, boom, Western. Right. He looks like a sheriff in a western town. And he fits that role perfect. I mean, Perfectly. he's been in Justified and a, yes. a bunch mm -hmm. of other western kind of projects. It, it was funny, too. Me and Keller kind of, like, eyed each other when he went to go take his seat. And as soon as he touched his helmet, Mando, like, turns the switch, like, no, you got to give oh, me that yeah. armor. Oh, yeah. Now, like, yeah. It was he may like, have been questioning up, how he was hands, standing. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, but as soon as he took his helmet off, he knew that he wasn't a Mandalorian. He's like, no, right. you got to give that to now, me. Now, and that's actually what kind of drives the remainder of the plot for this episode mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mando din wants that armor back um and we do get verification that it is beskar in this episode yes, yeah. and i know we've mm -hmm. always talked about like do we ever get that previously that boba fett's armor is beskar i know we don't in film or tv well a uh, lot of the paint is worn off of it which right. gives you that hint of beskar up underneath true um and I guess, you know, most Mandalorians, after they get their signet, they do paint it towards based on what that signet is. Right. But with uh, this one, we do get con confirmation that it is Beskar because he says, you know, he's going to return the armor to its ancestral right. owners. And it so, gets shot at. True. And the, and bullet, it just deflects and the it. laser deflects. Yeah. 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 Now, Mando, clearly, again, he wants this armor. Uh, but again, to avoid the shootout, they strike a deal, and that deal is to kill the dragon that sweeps sweeps through the town and yeah. just it swept right through it. Swept right through it, man. <laughs> I got I got a, uh, right through it. I yeah. got a funny uh, <laughs> <My> vocabulary. <laughs> hey, hey, you check you spell checked over here. It's your fault. No, I'm just kidding. That word's <laughs> not in here. <laughs> I got a funny callback, like pop culture related. When okay. when he like recruited him and he recruits the town, it was like uh, the SpongeBob episode with the Alaskan bullworm. He's like, we're yes. going gonna to push it somewhere <laughs> else, but instead, you know, and then they go to the cave, too. Yeah. I just thought that was funny. It may be <laughs> funny, funny only to me. Yeah, but no. <laughs> no. I I'm, never thought about that. that that's no, pretty funny. No, I didn't. Now, <laughs> so. Sandy Cheeks. I guess their mission <laughs> at this point, then, was were Din and Cobb expecting to I go on that. their own? Yep. And recruit the Tusken Raiders only to see what they thought, or like. Well, no, Cobb not. just says he knows where it lives, and okay. they were going to go look okay. at it. Okay, now they didn't know how big it was. The Tusken Raiders, right? Okay, right, 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 right. Now on their path to that, yeah, Cobb Vance Speeder. Is that Anakin's remnants of his pod? It looks a lot like it. It looks to very me. similar. It does the structure of it looks very similar? Yeah. What a cool Easter egg if that's yeah. the case. Like, give me more of that speeder. That might be my all-time favorite speeder <laughs> that I've seen yeah. in Star Wars. Because he loses one of them, right? In the pod race, Anakin? He, he almost does, but he fixes it. Okay. Correct, Jacob? I think so, yeah. There's Look, a lot yeah, of other... Rebel, Rebel Scum Texan would He goes would through know. the end uh, <laughs> intact. Yeah. True, true. 
So yeah, I, I loved that Easter egg. So you tell me, Nolan's pulling it up. I think that it's the one. I, I think that's the. I the think pod. so too. I think it might be missing like a couple of those yellow panels. Right. But and it's been a while. I mean, it's what forty years since. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be beat up, rugged. I'm. It's it's in my head canon. It was Anakin's <laughs> pod. <laughs> Are you gonna call that and mess up our three and zero record? Yes. Let's call it. Let's call it because we're we're going to be four and zero with that one. I okay. think that's an easy win right there. Yeah. <laughs> now, I don't know about the O part now, but we're <laughs> we're four. Hey, hey, it is it is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> okay. While we're awing about the speeder, Cobb is given his history. So, like, while I was sitting there typing away about the speeder, we're getting some more info Taking about notes, yeah, right, uh, about Cobb getting that armor. Finally, um, and he does get it from Jawas, like we had spec or not speculated. We were told that this sheriff in Tatooine gets bu- buys Boba Fett's old armor off of Jawas, which is this. I think this is the first time we've ever gotten visual connection to a book, at least since Disney has bought Star Wars. Hmm. So that's really great to see because that's been one of the negative things. As far as, like, they're just not capitalizing on written stuff that they're doing. And yeah. I know we're going down a, a crate dragon hole with this one. Hmm. But, you know. That's good to see. <laughs> well, we know that. I think <laughs> John Favreau dragon. has his, <laughs> his uh, he ties things together and better than Dave Filoni, Disney I would corporate. say they're, they're really <laughs> close to each other throughout that process. Yeah. So thoughts on it. I mean, thoughts on Cobb's history, his development. Uh, him getting the armor, things of that nature. It was just really cool, you know. Um, I didn't, I wasn't looking forward to him as a character when we heard about him being a possibility. Mm-hmm. But I thought, you know, at the end of this episode, I thought, you know, that was a really cool character that we got to agreed. be introduced to. Definitely yes. agreed. I think he's done though. Ooh. I- I got a question about that later. Okay. So let's tease that up. Bring it. Let's tease that up. <laughs> <laughs> now, Den and Cobb team up with the Tuscans. Cobb is completely against it at first. Yeah, uh, yeah. But again, we yeah. get more really cool detail with Tuscan Raiders. Mm-hmm. And here's right. where Jacob added I'm notes sure. <laughs> into my notes here for the episode. I'll read what you said, and then you want to elaborate yeah, on sure. it? sure. Okay, Jacob writes his brilliant <laughs> written hand. Tuscans are brutal, like the Dune Sea, but can communicate, have social interactions, believe in honor and keeping their word, and weaponry as developed as giant crossbows. Giant crossbows. <laughs> That's a riot. <laughs> All right, elaborate. <laughs> I mean, just flintlock <laughs> rifles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Elaborate and just discuss because I know that's something that me and you had talked about. It'd mm-hmm. be really cool to see. Mm-hmm. Is more like Tuscan Raider culture stuff. Yeah. Is so, that four zero? Five and zero at this Did point. You call it. We talked about we we thought we would see it again. Man, we're just like I think we're getting too cocky, guys. <laughs> we are, we are. No, no. Jacob, elaborate on the Tuscan Raiders, and we'll keep moving. Yeah, because in A New Hope, we've ever since that movie, we've always thought that Tuscan Raiders were just, you know, brutal, didn't care about human life. Right. They just beat you up or killed you. True. If you were in their turf. Yeah. Then this show comes along and changes that view that we had of them as fans that we've held for so long, right? So we get them talking to each other and doing sign, sign language, language yeah. and din. Which we've all tried to impersonate. All of it. <laughs> yeah. And mine you bet was we really have. bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. That was pretty good, man. Yeah. <laughs> so I just thought that was really cool. And, you know... um, there's like a this history between the settlers of Tatooine, the human people in Tatooine, and the Tuscan Raiders, where they kind of like hate each other because they would always kill each other, like go in raids against each other. And, yeah, you know, they're they're rivals. Yeah, they're rivals. like Shmi Skywalker, she was right. killed by yeah. Tuscan Raiders who point, raided the point. farm, and that's like that goes back hundreds of years in Star Wars, so. It makes sense why the villagers 
would be against that when you know that history in the Star Wars universe. Very true. And I, I'm glad that we are kind of getting to peel that curtain back a little bit and see some Tuskins in a, in a, in a different light. Let me yeah. ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, before today, before, before we watch this episode, mm-hmm. did you want to peel that onion back? Yeah. Oh, so I did. So we had talked about in the, our Chapter 5 rewatch whenever – we go to Tatooine in season mm-hmm. one, how we wanted to see that. Because what I was saying is, or what I was thinking was, you know, there's some things that we don't necessarily feel like we need to see. Mm-hmm. And then there's some things that they want us to see that just make it so much better. Yeah. Okay. And I think that, you know, and, the and Tuscan Raider thing that they do with this show is one of those things. It might have been what, you know, Ryan Johnson was trying to do with The Last Jedi, just giving us what he wanted us to see. Yeah. It just didn't work. Yeah. So <laughs> we're trying to talk. <laughs> no, no, continue. But that's kind of where I'm going with that. Like, no, I Favreau gotcha. did a great job because going into this, I wasn't wanting to see a backstory between some villagers and the Tuscan Raiders. I was wanting to see the Mandalorian, but mm-hmm. he gave it to me. Yeah. And now I'm happy that I saw it. True. It's like one of those things that you don't know you need until you see it. Yes. And I feel really good about that part. Yeah. You know, getting the history lesson between uh, this village and the Tusken Raiders. And, you know, like you said, it adds back all the way back to Shmi and the Tusken Raiders. Yeah. And Anakin slaughtering a herd of them. It really alters the way that you will, when we go back and see Attack of the Clones and A New Hope and all those Tatooine images when we see Tusken Raiders, it makes you see things a little bit differently. Well, what was really interesting to me is that Din knows Tuskenese or Tusken. Yeah. That's, uh, that makes me very curious about more of his past. On how he True. knows that. So, yeah. <laughs> great question, man. Maybe we'll get it later this season. Ooh. I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't think we're done. We're definitely not done with Tatooine. So we might get that. Oh. We might get that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Again, that's a tease up for later. All right. They go to check out the dragon. And they arrive at this pit. And we get the detail today, uh... that the dragon lives in an empty Sarlacc pit. And yeah, I know well. immediately as we heard that, my thought was, well, is that how Boba Fett was freed? What Did this dragon kill the Sarlacc that he was in? And that's what allowed him to get free. But, Jacob, you brought up a really good point real quickly, immediately after I said that, that kind of debunks that. Yeah, it's not at the same place. Right. And I always thought Sarlaccs were stationary. None. Okay. Is the Sarlacc... The Sarlacc pit... No, no, okay, I see what you're saying. I yeah. see what you're saying. So the Sarlacc pit that we saw in Return of the Jedi was at, in the Dune Sea. Yep. And we're not near the Dune Sea nah. currently. So I think that does debunk that thought. But, man, would that have been interesting. So I still think we're getting more information about how Boba Fett got out of there. And I'm hoping it's mm. more so about maybe something that he did. I don't know. Yeah. I think that's more towards speculation that we might kind of <laughs> talk about okay. later. I'm going to bring this up before I forget it. Okay, do it. And it's totally... <laughs> Um, not related. Okay. <laughs> uh, but it kind of is at the same time. Well, let's hear it. So, is it about how good that hat looks? <laughs> <laughs> hey, nice hat, man. Wow. <laughs> hey. Yeah, nice hat, Dan. Man, Golly. that's a great looking hat. <laughs> All right, anyway. <laughs> hey, so, when, um, Boba loses his, or gets tossed into the Sarlacc pit, he has already shot his rocket. When... The armor is on Cobb Vance. He's got the rocket and he shoots it. And when he shoots his rocket at the end of this episode, Mm -hmm. who's making those rockets? Because the armor is the only one that can make the whistling birds for Mm -hmm. Mando. So my thing is, who's making the rockets for Cobb Vance? Well, they they do. They're mining explosives of some sort. I don't know. True. But but they're uh, painted. But, but the one he had in true. this episode was painted and looked like it had been worn. That true. might be one of those like Star Wars plot hole things that you just roll with. <laughs> kind of like how in the For- <laughs> Force Awakens, <laughs> Kylo Ren leaves his helmet on the bridge and then uh, Star Killer ba- base blows up. But then in the Last Jedi, he somehow has his helmet again. You know, kind of one yeah. of those situations. Well, I don't know. <laughs> that's three uses of that rocket. Yeah. 
there's got to be an answer for that somewhere. Sh- shouldn't there be? S- possibly. I mean, it was just a little thing that I noticed. I was like, well, you know, because Mandalorian, he had to, or Dan, he had to restock his ammunition before he left and re- refill mm-hmm. the whistling birds and everything. Mm-hmm. And they're supposed to be very rare. So use them sparingly, as the armorer puts right. it. Right. Well, you know, this Cobb Banth is just shooting these rockets left and right. And you know Boba Fett shot his rocket on Jabba's uh, ship before he got tossed into the Sarlacc pit. Maybe he can make custom rockets. But painting <laughs> them rustic to match his armor? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Come on, Star Wars. <laughs> you thought right, you pulled think, that one over on me. I think we're getting too, too deep into those details there, but that's what we do here at Mando Talk. That's what we do. Go back and watch it. See what you think. Comment in the section below. <laughs> Comment in the section below. <laughs> you killed it with that. We are watching a lot okay. of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> we go back to the village, and they are voluntold that they got to help kill this thing. They're yeah, not yeah. happy about it initially, but they suck it up. They end up doing it. And let's talk about that showdown there at the end. Uh, Jetpack. Nolan, I know you flipped oh out when we saw this. And I've been waiting on it for the past, <laughs> like, 45 minutes. And he's like, let's get it. And I was like... Let's get it. Yes, let's do it. Oh, it was so awesome. Were those words actually said? Let's get it. Let's get it. Uh, he said, "Let's, let's get, get to it. it." I think. I let's think get he to said, it. I think he said, "Let's get to it." Let's get to it. Okay. And uh, I was like, oh, "Boys, you better." You it better was get him. pretty cool, and I, I kind of. They're like. I wonder if Din has done some training in between these chapters here. Like, how much time has passed? Well, let me ask you this. When you get a new toy, do you play with it? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so I think there's no doubt that yeah. he's gotten it out and flowing it around. Yeah. Now, I will say this, and Jacob added notes in here again, because I, I guess, or maybe it was B.A., I don't know. It, it might have been B.A. It wasn't me. Okay, it was somebody. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> I thought it, the strategy to kill this thing was a little backwards. For me, I thought it would have made more sense for them to strap the bantha full of explosives get the dragon to eat the bantha first and blow the thing up once it eats the bantha Hmm. as the first plan. Like, that would make more sense to attempt first. Put all those explosives on that bantha's back like they had, let the thing eat it, and then hit that detonation. But your timeline's messed up. So when they they join forces with the Tusken Raiders and they bring them there... The uh, the dragon eats the raider, not the bantha. Right, yeah. and the banthas didn't have, ac- or the not the banthas, the tuscan raiders didn't have access to the explosives until right. Din showed up. No, I'm s- so for them to put the bantha out there with explosives, it wouldn't have eaten the bantha. Probably not. Yeah, the only reason it ate full. it is because it ate Mando, and Mando was near the bantha. Yeah, so the okay. the the dragon was going after the people slash tuscan raiders. Okay, and then, not the and bantha. not the banthas. I guess it. Earlier in the episode, when we were first introduced to the dragon, it ate the bantha. So I was just thinking maybe that's its meal that's of choice. Right. Yeah, I didn't think about that. So, yeah, that's right. But I think that's the reason that scene is in there where they're trying to show it off. Like yeah. we feed him so he goes to sleep, and instead mm-hmm. of eating the bantha, it turns and eats okay. Tuscan Raider. And that, so maybe that's where perf- Din. That's where Din kind of gets like struck. He's like, all right, we got to think of something else. We need more yeah. people. I guess I, I don't know. I I just thought for me personally, I would have attempted to get the dragon to eat. The bantha with the ammun- the explosives on it first before, and yeah. then when he has eaten the thing, then try to blow it up. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. So I thought it was a little backwards there, but I'm I'm okay with it. I mean, we got some great action shots with the jetpack usage, and I kind of get what you're saying, BA too. I think it's like one of those things that you know you have different angles. It's to another it. plot hole. It's the three rockets. Yeah, <laughs> it's Star Wars, man. Yeah. Like we can't get too picky, but I enjoy. No, it. no, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that that might be a hole there. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I'm not like critical. the size of a great dragon. Hole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Like it is. It's um. It's interesting. I wonder if they're like he has an armor or something like that. So that's what I was getting at. I I didn't know if there was another armor that he was getting his rockets made from. Ooh. I see. Mm. Well, and See, I also I. think that Cobb Vanth, because he has that Mandalorian armor on, can go into Moss Eisley and Moss Espa and all these different ports on Tatooine and flaunt his armor and get whatever he needs for the village. So I think he can easily transport back and forward whatever they need and only because that armor. So. True. 
So and he's got Anakin. I pod think racer. I think there's more to know and learn about Cobb Vanth, and I don't think we're quite done with this guy because there's so yeah. much. And it, Timothy Alvin. I mean, we talked about it earlier. Exactly. What a great face. I mean, you got to use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, so, how many episodes do you think he's got left? I think that we're treat they're treating this like season one did with Navarro. Be a trilogy at the start. With Navarro, with chapter one, two, and three, I think we're spending time on Tatooine during chapter one, two, and three. Personally, because what do I you think, guys think I think the climax will be chapter three. Cobb Vanth somehow gets entangled with Boba and Din's scuffle or whatever's going. Our on record with is on the line, so I'm just saying. <laughs> Right, because he, he's still he's still looking from info from a Mandalorian, so he's gonna run into Boba at some point. Who's True, not a Mandalorian, but yeah. True, and Boba's gonna want armor. that armor back. Do you think Boba Fett is a Mandalorian? Gosh, oh. see, see now our record's Boosh. ruined because I have no clue what to say to that, and I still don't know. Yeah, <laughs> can't do it. Not tonight, boys. Do you think he is? I'm not gonna answer that. I'm gonna so the yeah, fifth. let's talk about that real quick. We <laughs> no, do get this to is Mara a Morrison. show. We can't plead the fifth. <laughs> we get to Mara Morrison back. Great image, twin sons. Oh, yes, and let's like the the scene kind of like pans down. Like I don't it know does. what they call that. It goes to a widescreen, yeah. sort of. It's like a fade out, like a panorama kind of yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love just, that, that visual. I love Nolan's just throwing yeah, out yeah, words yeah, that he's yeah, heard in yeah. cinema. <laughs> yeah, widescreen panorama. Yeah. They do the wide angle lens, like the fisheye lens. Oh man! <laughs> One of those words was probably right, so I'll give it now, to you. Now it looks like <laughs> Tamara Morrison's there. Boba Fett is strapped with uh, one of the Tusken Raiders it looks rifles. Like Tusken Raiders equipment and, and a, a weed eater is what I thought it looked like initially. <laughs> it did look like a weed eater, but when you go but back, there's no grass to trim out there. I no, mean, and there's no hair sand. to trim because he's sand. already got it all. <laughs> he's just it's the just world's sand. best landscaper. Yeah, there you go. I hate sand, uh, but. It, if you go back and watch, a lot of the Tuscan Raiders had clubs sort of like that. So it's, it's just a, it's just okay. like a, a staff, a bow staff maybe. <laughs> Ray, I think I, I think he's been in I think he's been in disguise like as a Tuscan Raider. I think yeah. like he took his bandages now, off before that. Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good point. Let's talk about that kind of. Let's bounce off that word disguise there. But he's wearing okay. like black, <laughs> not tan. Yeah, that's a good point too. That's, Let's yeah. bounce off that though. <laughs> so, no, no, we can bounce off what Jacob said too. I can bounce off that. So what he hey, was let's wearing? Bounce off of it though. <laughs> what he was wearing there at the end of that episode? Does that confirm to us that that was in fact Boba Fett at the end of chapter five? I think yes. it does. Yes. Okay, because I think it. I know does. we talked about was it was it Cobb Vanth? I don't think it is because we Cobb Vanth didn't have a cape. No. And I don't even think Boba has a cape. I think it's more so just like a like a robe, a robe or something going on. But yeah. but regardless, the way that it looks in Chapter Five, there with the spurs, uh, the long robe or cape, whatever it is, black matches perfectly with what he's wearing here. Yeah. So I have no, and again, here's our record on the line. I have no doubt. It is though, the record. I have no doubt that Boba Fett. Is just lurking. He's he's like Palpatine right now. Yeah. He's lurking in the shadows. You said that. Watching things yeah. play out on Tatooine, and I guess he's waiting for his moment. And maybe Din Djarin showing up is his moment. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, so I just looked up the cast for Episode Nine of The Mandalorian. Okay, it's got Pedro Pascal as the Mandalorian, obviously. Uh, John Leguizamo, Leguizamo <laughs> as. Gore Koresh. Whoa. Okay. I don't know. That's interesting. I thought that was John Favreau voicing that, honestly. Amy Sedaris as Pele Motto. Okay. Timothy Oliphant, Cobb Vanth. Tamara Morrison as Boba Fett. So it's been confirmed. It's confirmed. Okay. It's confirmed. No doubt that that was Boba Fett as soon as they showed him. Yeah. And that's yeah, no. um that is Wikipedia, so they're pretty reliable. So some yeah, 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 yeah. I would say confirmed Boba Fett. Yes. I, w- I would tend to agree. Now, are we getting answers for Boba Fett's survival and past next episode? You know what would be cool? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. We're getting risky now with the yeah, predictions. This is the speculation <laughs> segment. So yeah. we, we've ran this through our This doesn't count. We re- can't count that. We've ran through our review. We've ran through our recap. You've got our initial reactions. Let's speculate now with what's next. So you know what would be cool? 
You know how in season one we got flashbacks from Din? Yes. It would be cool to get flashbacks from uh, Boba at, on like post Sarlacc. Like, Agreed. see him battling the Sarlacc or how he escapes. Yeah. And then his transition into losing his armor. Um, and maybe he sold it to the Jawas for food or water, like kind of like Cobb Vanth had to sell the crystals for yeah. food and water. Which and we already armor. got flashbacks for Cobb Vanth's history, yeah. so let's get them for Boba as well. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, mm-hmm. Star Wars. So is it going to be next episode, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> Three <laughs> episodes. I think we'll be on... Chapter 11? Yes, I think we'll be on uh, <laughs> Tatooine. Yeah, I think we'll be on Tatooine for three episodes. Okay, there's a lot so to cover. Okay, so then let me go back to this. You still d- you think we're done with Cop Vanth though? If we're still on Tatooine, mm-hmm. ooh, ah. oh, I oh, ooh, 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 maybe, maybe this, <laughs> maybe this just just hit me right now. So you know how in the middle of season one, well, like episode was it six maybe of season one, how. Mando goes back for Quill. I think he'll go back to get mm, Cobb, uh, Cobb's to help Cobb him. Vance help for yeah, something. I see that. Now, <laughs> ooh, that kind of just made me think of something. So we might not get Boba. Yeah. We might be leaving the Tatooine right now. Nah. To oh, go find oh, a Mandalorian. Oh, I see what you're And saying. then coming back, so like we he, get the backstory gotcha. on Boba and Cobb Vance. I gotcha. Hmm. That's back to the scoreboard. Cause oh man, that's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think we would have saw him getting the razor crest though, and sort of go in the atmosphere if it, they were leaving Tatooine. Okay, yeah, because the they always do that. Yeah, that's so go true. ahead and put a one in the start and end in space, <laughs> which we didn't start in space this time. No, we started right in it, which man. is new. Well, but it's not new for the intro of a no, season. Yeah, right. right. Season one intro. With Mando walking, just like with this one, just we don't have the child at his hip yes. like we do now. A lot, a lot happened. I mean, that was one episode. Yeah, and that was a lot. <laughs> if we continue with this momentum and this pace, m- this is gonna be incredible, man. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go back to the scoreboard real quick. <laughs> Add another one to the scoreboard for length of the episode. Mm-hmm. High five on all that. Woo! Air five, high five. Yeah, <laughs> air five. Did, did one of us call fifty? Was it fifty two? Fifty four. Fifty four minutes. Okay. No, but longer episodes <laughs> is great. I'm counting it. It might be a quarter of a point or half a point, but it's on the board. Okay, uh, <laughs> man, that's awesome. We got fifty four minutes. That's the longest we've ever had. Yeah, Lorian on really screen. Good to see. That's great. It was really good to I see. I hope they maintain that speed now, right there. I do have just a couple more things I want to real quickly talk about. No real mo- quickly. No Moff Gideon. I, I'm, I okay. just really want to see this dude. Yeah, I'm not. You're, I don't think we should rush that. Okay. I don't want to get too much too quick. Okay. No, that's I fair. Think, I think this episode mm-hmm. was the perfect intro. Right. It gets yeah. you It gets you pumped up in the first scene. Yeah. Because we get the, the whistling birds mm-hmm. just... Oh, yeah, do it. Yeah. yeah, and then he gets in that hand-to-hand, and he gets the knife out. And oh, dude, dude, the What knife? about his, like, head, like, when he... Oh, yeah, he was <laughs> using his head because they were punching him in the best guard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great action. Guys. And, and again, I forgot this guy's name, but isn't the guy that directed... Excur- ex- what's it, with Chris Hemsworth on Netflix? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, yeah. I keep Extraction. It. Extraction. There, thank yes. you. Uh, isn't he directing the, the stunt scenes? Yeah. yeah. Shout out to you, bro. Yeah. Shout out to you. <laughs> you the real MVP. <laughs> okay. I, well, I think that's really. That's the real MVP right there. True. True. I Rebel think, scum text. I think the. Um, I think that's really all that I have as far as like my initial takes. Other than I loved it. Yep. Very very good. Yeah. Very good. Too. Very good. <laughs> Absolutely. I well, can't wait for next week, man. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. We got seven days. <laughs> seven days. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I was going to pose the question if you thought this was better than all the episodes in season one, but we'll we'll wait till the excitement dies down of it just being like new well, Mandalorian. We can give our immediate takes and we can close the show I think there. they're all going to be that. I don't think it was better than all of them. I don't think it was better than chapter eight. Yeah. Chapter, chapter eight, eight is still pretty tight, bro. Yeah. <laughs> pretty tight. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. the same for me. Um. I would say it's in the top three yes. now. I think that bumps episode Chapter. three out. Ooh. 
it might bump Chapter 7 out for me. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I see that. I see that. But it is top three. I agree with that. I hate playing this ranking game because I love them <laughs> yeah, all so I know. much. <laughs> I know, dude. Uh, but, Jacob, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> Just like that one guy. Yeah, yeah. You're not <laughs> taking his armor. <laughs> <laughs> we th- I thought that was so funny. It was funny. Oh man, I can't. Um, I guess it was better than episode two. Was that Chapter your top? Two? Episode two was your top until no. now. No, oh, okay. no, no, no. Okay. And we're we're okay. We're down to this final thing, and I just realized something. What? We didn't talk about the child once. That's because he didn't do anything. He was really just there to be cute during this episode. He was there for our wives. <laughs> no, because he was there for me, bro. He was there. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you did. I see. No, no, no. I I enjoyed seeing him. And the funniest thing, the most memorable thing that the child did for me was um, when he saw the whistling birds light up. He was like, "Bye," yeah, <laughs> and he and he jumped in his little. Uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, this eggshell. It's like a, it's like <laughs> a cradle. Yeah, well, they have a name for it. I can't remember what the name is for it. Um, but yes, that was the funniest part. And that was pretty much all the action we I got. I think out that of they it. are holding the child back until later in the season. Because again, like you said with Moff Gideon, let's not reveal too much too mm-hmm. early. And yes. this show is called The Mandalorian, and they executed on reintroducing everyone back to Din Djarin as The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So job yeah. well done to John Favreau. I mean, I would have been a little disappointed if they showed more force. that er- I wouldn't have been disappointed, per se, yeah. but it would have been like... Did we need it this soon? And I think I think we got just the right amount. I think yeah. so. I think we got the perfect intro back to season two. And also, we don't want to make the child overpowered. True. You know, too soon. Yeah, yes. agreed. He's not trained, so there's that. I mean, he's force choking and healing, so it's got Jedi and Sith traits. <laughs> what are we doing? No, I was gonna say uh, Ray wasn't trained, but. You know, whatever. Oh, man. Here we go. Here we go. All right. With that said. Listen, we had a great time watching this episode. We had a great time finally getting to talk about new Mandalorian content. We have content. We had really great hats on. (laughs) We have great hats on. (laughs) Rebel Scum Texan, congratulations. Congratulations. We're going to be hitting you up soon, probably through Twitter, because that is the way that you entered the contest. And thanks to everybody that entered the contest. Yes. Yes. And again, we will probably do something we we love doing this. Um, we're gonna love getting you on the show, Rebel Scum. And then we're we need to get your shirt size. So be getting that after we reach out and send you a DM. Be Agreed. getting that to us so we can get your shirt size and get your shirt made and some stickers and all your Mando Talk merch. Absolutely. Now we can't wait to be back next week. We got Chapter Ten. It's oh, great to continue double to digits. have. Mandalorian content content we're putting Mando back in Mando talk and we hope that you join and follow along with the ride thank you BA thank you Jacob for being here yes sir always a pleasure to get your input I'll go ahead and send it to my co-host to send us out of here and this is always the way we have spoken <laughs>